In our introductory discussion, we just brushed slightly the notion of a branch cut and coined the concept of a regular branch of a multi-valid function. You probably noticed how transparent the concepts become once we resort to the geometrical language. So the, the key to a successful work with regular branches is the clever usage of a geometrical representation of complex numbers and complex plane. So let's address a more general example. Let's consider the more generic cubic root function. f of z equals the cubic root of g of z function. Where g of z function is an arbitrary function in a complex plane, it's assumed to be single-valued and meromorphic. So how do we explore its analytical structure? Well, first of all, we see that the equation f cubed is equal to g of z has in general three distinct roots. So it's a triple-valued function. So to make it single-valued, we need to draw branch cards. But where to start them and where to end? Well, as you see in a minute, the beginning and end points of our branch cards are always the zeros or poles of the function under the root, that is g of z. So suppose g of z has some simple root, like first of the root at some point z sub b. Then, to investigate its structure in the vicinity of this point, we may tailor expand it and uh, retain only the first or the term. So g of z is equal to c1 times z minus z sub b. Then f function is also drastically simplified. And we see, once we make a rotation round point z sub v uh, along the small circle, the f function changes accordingly. It's multiplied by two, e to the 2 pi i by 3. So even the infinitesimal rotation around this point makes the function multivalid. So this point, in this case, it's a first order root, makes a function multivalued. Uh, and we should start a branch cut right here. That kind of poles obviously play a special role in our analysis. So they're called branch points. So what if our g of z function has, for example, a pole at some point? Let it be a simple pole, a first order pole. Then again, we do the same trick. We Laurent expand this function in the vicinity of this point. So g of z is equal to c negative 1 over z minus z sub b. And then again, we make a rotation around this point, and f function now also changes, but in a slightly different manner. It's multiplied by the exponential with the exponent minus 2 pi i by 3. So again, we should start a branch cut here, and z sub b being a first order pole, again, is a branch point of our multivalent function. Therefore, the potential branch points of our root type functions are either zeros or poles of the function under the root. If a function under the root doesn't have zeros or pole, then what? Then a function will be single-valued. The classical example would be an exponential function. Indeed, let g of z be a simple exponential e to the power of z. We remember that exponential doesn't have zeros and poles in the complex plane, but then the cubic root would be simply e to the power of z by 3. So it's again a single valid function. Now suppose we do a branch cut and we want to build a regular branch of our multi valid function. So how do we do this? In our first lecture, when we considered a simple square root, we did the following. The branch cut was along the positive real semi-axis and we chose uh, the arithmetic root on the upper bank of this branch cut. And then we made the analytical continuation from the, all the points on the upper bank of the branch cuts into a complex plane. And this is how we built a regular branch. But here we'll go even further. We'll argue that it's enough to choose the value of our multi function at a single point in a complex plane. And then from this point, we'll be able to reconstruct the full regular branch of our function. So here is how it's done. Let's denote this reference point as z0. And then the definition of our function at this point, f cubed, is equal to g of z0. So let's pick up some value, like f0 as a cubic root of g of z0. And here goes the statement. There exists a unique regular branch of function f, let's call it 
f naught z such that it coincides with the value f naught at point z naught. So how do we build it? We do the following trick. Suppose we want to find the value of our function at some arbitrary point z. Then we connect the reference point and this point z with some contour. And the condition is that this contour shouldn't cross the branch cut. That's important. And then we compute the change of the argument of our z number once we travel from z naught to z. Well, the argument of the complex number is a multivalued function. It's defined modular to pi. But the change of the argument is the uniquely defined function. It doesn't have this modular to pi multivalidness. So, okay, we have our change of the argument. But once we figured out the change of the argument of z, we can also find out the change of the argument of g function. It's single valued, right? Let's denote the delta argument of g as we travel from z naught to z. And then we do the following. We write the formal definition of our function. And then the right-hand side should be rewritten as g of z divided by g of z naught times g of z naught. And then we rewrite the ratio as the modulus of the ratio times the corresponding exponential factor. But the exponential factor in, he, in its exponent will have precisely this delta argument of g once we travel from z naught to z, which already computed times g of z naught. All right, and then we extract the cubic root from both parts of this equation. So on the left-hand side, we will simply have f of z. But on the right-hand side, we should extrude the cubic root in such a way that at point z naught, it will give us f naught value. So, and you can clearly see that if you choose the positive value of the cubic root of the modulus, And then the cubic root of the exponential will simply add one third to the exponent. And for the cubic root of g of z naught, we will simply uh, substitute f naught. And here it is. We built a single valid function which coincides with f naught at point z naught. What if we want to build another regular branch? Well, it's done in this very similar manner. The only difference is that at point z naught, we just choose another solution of this cubic equation. So f cubed is equal to g of z naught. And then we cap a different root. So f1 is equal to f naught times e to 2 pi i by 3. And then step by step, we repeat the same procedure. So what we will get in the end is a very similar construction and the only difference will be additional factor e to the power 2 pi i by 3. So now our new regular branch, f1 over z, will be equal to the previous regular branch times e to 2 pi i by 3. And of course, the same goes for the third regular branch. And naturally, this technique is independent of a particular power which defines our multivalent function. Here, we, we dealt with one third power, cubic root. But of course, it can be any arbitrary, real, or even complex power. All the steps will remain the same. For example, for the new power, we'll have very similar expression for the uh, regular branch of a multivalent function. We'll have f of z would be equal to the uh, modulus of the ratio of g of z and g of z naught to the power of new. And then, of course, we'll have exponential i nu delta argument of g once we travel from z naught to z and the value of the function at point z naught. And now we'll apply this technique to more specific examples. Mm -hmm.